super excited for this one because we're finally going to see Papa Nurgle in action. Hugs, kisses, and debilitating diseases. Combine them with the power of contagious friendship and you get oodles of broken fun. Because in Total War Warhammer 3, we're going to be using the wonderful friends of Papa Nurgle to put a whole new meaning to the word yeah. sick by using a few slightly, <laughs> extremely overpowered yeah. mechanics. I'm the Grim Cleaver, and oh, before really? we get into the video, consider Wait. subscribing. You made this video when you only had 27k subs? <laughs> oh my god, that growth is astronomic. Well deserved too. And yes, as Grim Cleaver says here, go over to his channel, link in the description. Please go and give him a like and sub. ...to the channel, or this guy will take up refuge under your bed. But fecal fun aside, let's get into the video. So if you've never heard of a Total War game, I'll explain the main mechanics along the way. Starting a new campaign, we get a bunch of factions to choose from. We have Korn, mm -hmm. the Blood God, Zinch, or a reskinned Protoss, Kislev, who are basically just normal Russians... Well, where's Protoss from? I... I don't know. Cafe, a faction ruled by a dragon addicted to crushed green rocks. And Slanesh, the BDSM enthusiast who forgot the safe word. But we're going to be yeah. playing Nurgle, a bunch of flea bags who like to spread their gift in the form of plagues. Plagues that are also completely broken in the way they work, which we'll get to later. And now we get to meet our uh, beautiful leader. Now, there's a whole bunch of like lore and stuff. And oh, no, I accidentally oh, skipped no. it. Basically, there's like a super <laughs> polar bear and we want to use him to make a disease i don't really know and what? so loading into the game we have our nice nanny <laughs> okay i mean uh, i know that there's like a bunch of different campaigns when it comes to total war warhammer 3 i'm assuming since there's a story here that this is one of the story campaigns rather than the immortal empire's map city right here and our good friend kugath so what we're looking at right now is the main campaign map of the game this is where we see all the cities and armies and all that fun stuff we can click on our hmm. settlement over here to build stuff or our army to recruit more units so by clicking on kugath here and then clicking the enemy army we can go to attack them we're then brought to this screen where i can choose to either auto resolve the battle which just fights everything for us or or, as I'm gonna choose, fight it myself. You know, this is actually super helpful. I mean, in all the other videos, we were just kind of going through, like, the story and, like, humorous moments. But, uh, here, Cleepers literally just give me a walkthrough of how to play the game. <laughs> and that brings us to this lovely battlefield over here, where we can admire our good friend Kugath in all of his, uh, glory. On this side is all of nice. our guys, and the other is these... Why do some of our units have damaged already is that just how they work because uh i mean or maybe it's a the campaign thing or maybe they took attrition i don't know disgusting ogres you might not like it but this is what peak male performance looks like so after i set up all of my <laughs> units here we can go ahead and start the battle hugif actually uh, has a ranged attack uh where i think he just yeah oh what oh hey that's that's really cool. Turns what? out that uh, using chunks of yourself is a really good weapon. Either way, we have to- <laughs> Well, was it a chunk of him? It looked like one of the little... Uh, I guess their name w was Nurglings or something like that when I watched these cinematic trailers and I've gotten comments confirming that. So I'm going to assume all these little guys down here at the bottom here are, are Nurglings. Did he just like spit out a Nurgling and throw it? That kind of looked like what it was actually uh you know kill our enemy now and uh unsurprisingly these uh noblars i think are just gonna get completely overwhelmed meanwhile their ogre lord is uh trying to fight kugath single-handedly which i don't know if that's really a good yeah. idea oh hey that's ooh. Ooh. i could also cast spells from down here in order to weaken him which is uh basically just a giant fart cloud oh i guess we made pretty quick work of the uh giant ogres over here yeah, yeah i'd be a little scared too if uh this is what i was up against uh -huh. Now Certainly. I can just go ahead and fast forward and uh, have all of our units just go and circle beat this guy into the uh, next dimension. After we win a battle, we have a choice of uh, what to do with the remaining enemies. I can eat them, I can sacrifice them, or I can use them to make plagues. And you know which one we're gonna do. Now that we've defeated that, that first army, the yeah. game will automatically recruit for us this guy over here. Now this guy right here is absolutely crucial to us winning battles. Because we can actually take a look at his skill tree and you can see that he has 
a bunch of stuff he can cast. Uh, but right now, none of this really matters. But heroes? later in the game, when we level him up, he's going to get really, really broken. So now we can just go over here and uh, attack the settlement, which is going to bring us to yet another battle, and this time with a bunch of slightly tougher guys. So this time around, the battle is actually going to be fought in a settlement. And dear God, thank you, CA, for making these battles better. So in these kinds of siege <laughs> battles, we want to go ahead and capture all these minor supply locations and yada, yada, yada. I don't get gotcha. it. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, Total War Warhammer 2, it, it wasn't as good. So, uh, it looks like Cleeper enjoys these more. And uh, I hope whenever I get to the game, I'll, I'll enjoy them too. Crap. Okay, so it looks like the ogres got smart and uh, they're riding... I don't even know what these things are. Unfortunately, we have a, a crap load of these disgusting nurglings, which are pretty much going to overwhelm anything. A and they're already running away. Good job, AI. The AI is uh, genuinely confusing me at this point. I Oh my gosh. I love oh these nurglings God. so much. These ogres might be like 10 times our size, yeah, but unfortunately, nerglings. we have way more than them. Something else I can... Are the nurglings just kind of like grappling across each other using each other as whips and something like that they're kind of like a a tide of i guess flesh i suppose it makes a lot of sense given the context of what nurgle is and does the fact that they're like tiny little mini versions of nurgle though is kind of funny do is that uh, you'll notice there's a lot of gaps in the ogre's formation i can actually just force path my guys past the ogres in order to surround them so as long as i just keep clicking over and over and over again my guys are just gonna surround them so another thing that we oh. have access to is uh, nurgle has an arm hmm. that could be a good tactic in order to gain i guess uh some sort of bonus when you're attacking your enemy from behind because that, that should be a thing, right? I mean, it is a thing uh, when you use your cavalry and whatnot to, to attack from the flank or behind. That's kind of what you want to do. But I didn't know you could do that with just forcing your units through an enemy unit and then surrounding them. It makes sense in hindsight, but yeah. Just another one of those little tricks that you can only learn from watching one of these videos. ...me ability over here. What this means is that as our units take damage, we generate points. We can then use those points in order to curse our enemies. This one just reduces speed, oh. but as the game goes on, we get access to some pretty ridiculous ones. So and you just want like your before, damage, uh, It yeah. turns out it's very hard to hit. Oh my god, that's, that's a lot of vomit. Something else you notice is that sometimes enemies will have these little icons over their head. These flags mean that they're routing and running away. The thing about gotcha. our faction, though, is because we're a bunch of chaos demons, uh, we never they route. Don't route. So our disgusting oh. horde is just going to fight until they die. Very good. Alrighty, eh, we did it. I can choose. Does this apply to all chaos factions? Is everybody just so crazy that they would fight till they die? I guess so. I mean, they are chaos demons, so they just kind of serve a purpose. And they're probably not going to be thinking about their family back home, so yeah to try to hunt down as many guys as I can before the battle ends. But uh, the big weakness of the Nurgle faction is that we are slow. so slow. I mean, Valve mm. produces games faster than we walk. So by winning this <laughs> battle, we now could occupy the settlement and gain access to it. This lets us start building stuff in order to get more money. Normally, you spend money up here to build buildings. You then spend more money in order to upgrade those buildings. But with Nurgle, you build the buildings only once and they grow into their next stages. The growing part oh. It's absolutely nothing, which means that making things is extremely cheap for our faction because all of our buildings automatically upgrade themselves. As you can see here, we have this whole list of units that we can get. Normally, it takes a while mm. to train units, but with Nurgle, we can instantaneously summon units. The downside is that they don't summon at full health and we can only summon so many. We get oh, more. Oh, okay. That might be why at the be very beginning of this campaign, that some of our units were in at full health. Interesting mechanics going on here. And I can certainly see the downside to this, like, self-growing building thing. Like, yeah, maybe it costs less, but time. It costs time. Which uh, the other factions might not have to wait as long to get their better units if they have the money. Whereas for us, we can't really bypass that, right? So probably have to get the ball rolling super early as fast as possible and make sure to keep up with everyone else. Units as buildings progress through their stages. The end result of this, though, is that we can just regurgitate armies on top of any one of our cities at any point. And as it turns out, True. being able to materialize entire armies from thin air is actually really strong. So after winning the settlement battle, all of our heroes leveled up. And in terms of... Wait. <laughs> Hate Zeech? That's that's a great upgrade. <laughs>
skills our plague ridden guy has a very specific job later in the game we also get access to something called fleshy abundance which we'll explore when we get there but trust me it's really really overpowered so right now our main goal in this game is to just keep expanding mm. and taking more settlements and to do that i need to introduce the most important mechanic in the game for us also known as our plagues here this is where we use infections in order to garner plagues which give us bonuses all of the plagues are up here here, but we can also unlock more and more symptoms which makes our plagues even better right now most of the plagues that we have are not very strong and they just seek to get us more infections but as the game goes on as long as we keep spreading plagues we could get some wait it comes out of every orifice <laughs> <What>? <laughs> oh no Ooh. all units suffer attrition yeah that makes sense if that's what's going on with you really useful stuff when i have my selection done i can just click infect and boom this plague here can actually spread to different settlements as well as nearby armies which means that one of our big goals in this playthrough is just to keep spreading more and more plagues to get more and more bonuses so we went ahead and moved over to the uh, enemy settlement and just to show you the power of plagues we've already spread the plague to the enemy army so i went ahead and started the uh, siege for the next settlement that we have to take uh, i also have like a, a breath spell which ooh, Ooh, baby. Kuga yeah, here is a little effective. bit too much Taco Bell. So right now the enemy is basically just trying to fight us in this giant blob fest. Unfortunately for them, that's exactly what we want. So Kugath actually has a really good passive ability called Nurgling Infestation, which heals all of our nearby Nurglings. What this means is that oh. we basically just want the fight to devolve into a giant blob because it makes us really, really yeah. strong. On the other side of things, I can also use this Miasma of Pestilence and cast it on all the enemy troops so as long as we sit here in a giant disgusting blob we keep regenerating more health than they actually can hurt us for jesus christ okay uh, i see now why this is optimal for us and, and because we have like a specific spell just for nurglings i guess nurglings are just like the most important part of any Nurgle army, army, ah, army. <laughs> which I guess makes sense. But we'd probably do quite poorly if it comes to like a ranged battle. If uh, the enemy units have a, a lot of ranged artillery that especially could maybe kite your units. I suppose that's also why we have the other spell where if we take a certain amount of damage, we get to slow our enemies so that we can finally catch up to them. Oh my god, this almost feels unfair. So Kugath sitting in a giant ball seems like it's kind of strong, but uh, it gets way worse. By getting Kugath up to near the end of this skill tree, he gains an ability where he simply deals Passive damage. constant damage to everyone around him, which means that if we sit in those giant blob fights, Kugath will single-handedly yeah, kill an entire enemy army, literally by mm -hmm. sitting there and doing nothing. Okay, so we just got a technology which is extremely important, which unlocks the symptom called fever. The fever symptom gives us money every time a plague gets spread. So unfortunately, I walked a little bit away from our settlement, and uh, now there's a bunch of dwarves knocking on the door. I'm going to hope that I can beat the dwarves with what I have as the garrison in the settlement, but Kugath is going to come over here and just attack this settlement. So just like the last battle, we're just going to ball up all of our units and split a off a couple of to capture battles. the point, and uh, we should be good. Okay, so something a little strange is uh, units just kind of like phase through these barricades what? if they're friendlies. So, it, you know, they just go... <laughs> and now all we got to do is just surround them on the other side, and all is of these ogres are going to be like trapped. That? And after a good 10 minutes of just sitting in a blob, we've uh, managed to basically kill all of them. Oh god, now there's another army that's about to attack our settlement over here. Why don't we share Merkel's love? Is this what online dating is like for women? Okay, so uh, those dwarves are attacking us again, and yeah, I don't yeah. think we're gonna win this. However, we can inflict a crap load of casualties. So you know that projectile that Kugath, our main general, shoots? The giant blob of himself? We can actually mm -hmm. build towers that shoot that, and twice as fast. So from the last couple games, minor settlement battles on the defensive side got majorly reworked. Now we have these things called defensive supplies. We can use those oh, to build 
okay. towers or to build barricades. Also, uh, this is the range on. of the tower. It's like 800 trillion miles. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so if we take a couple of shots at the uh, dwarves down here, they do a ton of damage. Now that might not seem like a ton, but we actually get supplies as the game goes on. Supplies so that we can more. use to build even more towers. I mean, already, look at how much damage we've done to these units without doing a single thing. So unsurprisingly, we lost. But with an army that was one-fifth the size of theirs, well, you we did almost take killed out. half yeah. of them. Okay, so it looks like he did. The siege battles do look a lot more interesting. And as somebody who enjoys defensive gameplay and... I mean, I used to like playing tower defense games as a kid. Uh, I think I might enjoy the aspect of defending it more than attacking, maybe. I do like the change, though. Just from that little detail. Decided to just uh, chill and stay right. here, so uh, I don't think you're gonna have a good time, buddy. Oh, this seems a little thematic. Uh, it looks like the dwarves are just gonna sit up on this hill and wait for us to come to them. I, I mean, just love watching Co Oh my they god. Can, they will. Kugath is just stamping on them. What the hell? The fact that our fastest units are a bunch of diseased frogs is uh, I think that sums up the Nurgle faction really well. It's like, go get them, boys. We're, uh, we're almost there. We've been going for so long the animation for these guys looks so dainty and silly it makes these frogs so much more lovable aha and it's already beginning and again okay and it looks like the dwarves are actually gonna try to siege our settlement which is cool because you know they just gave themselves yeah. the plague by doing it but instead of waiting for them to attack us we can actually just go ahead and attack them first all right so uh, unfortunately mm. they have a really good spot and they have a lot of ranged units which are probably gonna deal a lot of damage but uh that's exactly why we have our giant frogs you can just go you through see, them. our frogs are go so big line. in fact that i can actually just force them to walk directly over the dwarves and push their way through their lines so big hmm in the previous case there was just a lot of space between units so we could force ourselves through but i suppose mass also has something to do with being able to just breach through a front line which would make sense because when you see like a freaking giant dinosaur crushed through your front line, then uh, you would expect uh, the front line to crumble. There's probably some sort of formula that goes into it to calculate all that, and the terrain probably also has something to do with it. With like the, the speed of the unit, the charging damage, and mass of it. I guess you could probably just tell what's going to happen by judging like the visual aspect of the game of how big the frogs are compared to like the, the soldiers in front. But maybe if they were like... What, what is it, like pikemen? Uh, the other units that have like anti-large capabilities. Maybe they wouldn't break as easily. Oh my god, we made the battlefield complete chaos at this point. There's just random packs of dwarves everywhere getting eaten by frogs. Oh boy, I sure do love our frog cavalry charging against the enemy. <laughs> they just use their bellies. Wait, there's only one guy left. Is he is he dead yet? No, no, he's... Oh, no, no, he's, no he's dead. dead. Oh my gosh, from that fight alone, we get 310 infections. Holy crap. Oh, wow, I just got a random offer oh. from these beasts. Beastman. to give us two thousand dollars and sign a non-aggression pact i sure i didn't even know you guys existed to be honest uh okay great so this is what i was looking for so a plague just spread to stormvac mount but you might be realizing there was already a plague in stormvat mount what does that exactly mean well here's where the busted mechanic stack? regarding plagues comes in plagues can actually re-spread to the same settlements that they already exist in so if you have two settlements and both of them have the plague at the same time they can still keep spreading the plague to each other now for a couple of reasons that can get really really silly first by using rots every time a plague gets spread we get more nurglings to summon and with fever every time a plague spreads we also get more money when you combine these two together oh. and you keep using them over and over again we get what? a ton of money and a ton of nurglings Throw well are you kidding me is that just infinite money generation <laughs> other things in there that increase the plague duration or increase the chance of it spreading and you get so much value and again you can see this doesn't really make any sense we just got a plague that we spread originally to the dwarf over here back from him which gives us even more money and even more time and duration on our plague oh and it just gets even better now we're just giving plague to random people that are walking into our regions now it looks like the dwarf <laughs> guy over here is trying to uh, replenish a lot of his troops so that he can attack us 
again. But surprise, surprise, all I have to do is go create another plague, summon a plague cultist, and then just walk him over here. And now for a very low cost, he can no longer replenish. And as a matter of fact, he's just going to lose units every turn. Damn. Uh, we just got an event. With a dark ravine, your tally been sight, the pristine corpse of a colossal ancient stegodon. We can haul it into the sunlight or stuff it with maggots. Well, I mean, that's the easiest choice of my life. Okay, I am genuinely so confused. We are spreading the plague to so many people around the entire here. Map's okay, this be is the second time right that now. I got the same exact plague from the dwarves. And I mean, all these plagues are just making me tons of money. Okay, and Krugath is now level 10, which means that we can get this ability called Rotting Ways. And uh, chance of a plague spreading plus 50%, all mm, armies faction wide. But if good. you think that's bad, we get access to a building that also increases it by 50% for every one increase. of these buildings that we have. Oh, big event. Oh so God. this is a big deal. What this means is that now all over the place, we're going to be seeing a bunch of chaos rifts open up. And now we get to see what exactly is it that we're trying to do. To win the game, we have to kill a demon prince from every single chaos faction. These chaos what? rifts that are going to open up at some point, we have to walk through them and then use them to get into the lands of chaos. And once there, we have to fight a crap load of enemies in order to actually kill the demon prince. So at this point, we don't... Huh. Interesting. I suppose each campaign also has their own unique victory condition. To kill a demon prince from every single faction sounds... Sounds like a lot of work. I don't really have anybody else to fight, so I'm just gonna start fighting all the ogres, I think, to our right, because we need more land to take. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm sieging another one of these ogre settlements, and I'm a little worried. Luckily, of course, we do have our signature move, which is uh, just clustering yeah, all of our just... units into a ball, mm -hmm. and then farting on the enemy in order to take them out. <laughs> so hopefully that's gonna work again. So as much as it looks like these yeah, ogres sure are won't. doing a lot of damage against us, we're just slowly grinding them down, because they can't physically kill us. Plus, now that I have access to even more healing spells, I can use those as well. So something that makes Nurgle healing especially good is that in Warhammer 3, a lot of the healing is based as a percentage of max health. What makes that so mm. good is that because Nurgle units the have such massive have, HP pools, 1% of their health is like 100 health. Meaning that Nurgle units benefit from regeneration far more than any other because they just have more health to give. So we just got the next thing for our hero and it gives passive ability regeneration for Nurgle. This means that what? now on top of all of our Nurglings regenerating health when they're around Kugath, they also regenerate health on their <laughs> own. And on top of that, we just unlock oh the Alamada of Overpowered Abilities, Fleshy Abundance. This spell single-handedly is what makes our entire strategy work. <laughs> Healing per second, 1.6%. And just doing the quick math, oh, 1.6 no. healing per second, duration 20 seconds, on our entire army that means we heal more than a third of our max hp back now the game jesus christ i mean thematically it makes sense but like how are you going to fight this maybe is there some sort of grievous wounds kind of system in the game at all and if you guys are wondering what terminology that is i I played League of Legends a very long time ago. But essentially, it, it stops you from, well, it stops your healing from being as effective as it would normally be. Is there anything like that? Or do you just have to do as much damage as possible? Maybe fire damage could do something like that. It does a damage over time and kind of makes it harder for you to heal, maybe? Because, I mean, if there is, I, I don't recall reading any comment that talked about it. I just know that there's like a, a healing cap for each battle that you can apparently increase using certain abilities, or rather upgrades. The game does have something in place to account for this, and it's called the healing cap. Over the course of any oh, given battle, a unit can only heal so much until they can heal no more. However, the healing cap is also based as a percentage of max HP. And because our units have some of the highest max HP pools in the game, our healing cap is really high, rendering most of our units almost completely unkillable. I and now see. at last, the Chaos Rifts are gonna Balancing. open. So we finally made our way over to one of these Chaos Rifts over here. If I walk Kugath over to it, then we get to see a bunch of options that pop up. These are the four different domains that we can enter. Blood God, Land of the Plague Lord, Traverse, Dark Prince's Realm. Oh, so all the, the four Chaos Gods, and you can also use this to move elsewhere too. I mean, 
you're part of Nurgle faction, so would you have to kill a demon lord from or Nurgle? Eh? In order to fight people. We can also traverse the rift to like hyperspace jump away or just close the rift. But we're going to be entering the Dark Prince's realm, also known as Slanesh. And here we are. You can hear the weird whispers going around. Basically, the way this whole Slanesh place works is that we have six circles of seduction. We have to move through oh these various portals in order to get to the center and fight the boss. But each time we move through a portal, Slanesh is going to offer us some pretty big loot. If we take it, we're forced to leave the realm. If we don't, we can keep going. So it looks like, though, before oh, we could uh, close the rift, one of these... It gives you the option of simply going as far as possible to get the most rewards possible and then dipping. Or pushing all the way through to potentially get the best reward or maybe achieving a, a campaign victory. It does seem like a, a fun little challenging, I guess, level system. And I would... Guess that the other Chaos Gods also have their own different systems to work around, or maybe they all have a similar system of, like, tiers that you have to progress through. Slanesh army's popped out and is probably going to attack us. It's a good thing that I can just, uh, you know, mash down like 50 Nurglings and boom, we have a new army. <laughs> and here it is, the first circle. Slanesh is basically offering us uh, $15,000 to just fuck off. However, I don't really care. Uh, I think we can just sneak right past this uh, rebel army by... Oh, no, we can't. Okay, yeah, it looks like we are ever so slightly blocked by this uh, annoying army, so we're just going to go ahead Sad. and... What? What? 40, okay, I guess us walking into it, even though we're about to fight an army, still triggered the circle. Slanesh wants to give us a $40,000 and some pretty good bonuses. Unfortunately, no. Normally, we're supposed to be fighting a bunch of armies, but I'm pretty sure this guy who's below us is actually taking the aggro of, like, all of the Slanesh forces, and then they're just gonna try to kill him what? and not me. <laughs> and we made it to the third circle somehow without no. fighting a single person, Lucky. and uh, this is just not good enough i don't really care and yes it looks like the uh the first of many of these armies is here so unfortunately for slanesh i have a, a very secret tactic that we're going to be employing and there it is there's the tactic i have blocked every <laughs> single one of my units up into this disgusting depraved conflagration of illness and i suppose this would make sense for us because yeah, that's kind of our tactic but when it comes to fighting Slanesh, Slanesh units usually have like super high speeds, right? So there's no way that you're going to be like outmaneuvering them. All you can really do is just clump up and hope for the best. Now I am simply going to fast forward and not oh, move here they at come. all. And uh, as you can see, oh no, look at that. They have AOE. Oh, no. Man, that's so bad. Oh wait. See, as much as you would think that it's really bad that, you know, they're surrounding us on all angles. Oh no, hmm. this could be awful. For any other well, army, this would be why bad. Why are they losing then? Most of my units are regenerating so much HP that even those massive AOE hits right there, they just do nothing. And in order for me to offset the damage, all I have to do is use fleshy abundance and upgrade it and it casts itself on every single one of our units at the same exact time meaning that oh basically every second we are healing thousands upon thousands of hp and they simply can't do any damage on top of my spells that just decrease their melee attack and they literally can't do anything and so uh, in them losing 920 Rip. men we only lost 56 and i think i pressed about 10 buttons that game so at level 13 we get the ability for our plague ridden to choose one of three ridiculously strong abilities this one increases our damage in an area okay that's all right this one is really strong healing in an area okay i mean we already have healing this one does an ungodly amount of damage in a huge area and we can use it as many times as we want per damage battle per oh, second? yeah that is a little broken not to mention that we're really close to maxing out kugath and getting him his just passive damage to everybody around him at all times either yeah, way though we really can progress powerful. to the next circle and uh ooh, actually this is this is not a very good temptation you're you're not very good at your job this are getting you, worse <laughs> and with that we are at the final ooh. temptation seventy five thousand dollars and a whole bunch of pretty strong amulets now slanesh that's cool and all i really appreciate that however i did not come all this way to not kick your ass so i am going to kick your ass. It's time for Kugath here to face down against Slanesh's dark 
prince. And the format of these battles is really interesting. So right from the beginning, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of weird icons on the map. Our army will mm. start right here, and we essentially have to keep pushing up until we get to this final point, and we have to take capture points along the way. Because the map oh. is absolutely massive. After we take Boy. each control point, we have to defend it, and we can build defenses and towers and summon reinforcements. So oh, so it's like a, a combination of a, a normal battle plus a siege battle. But this thing looks like it's, what, three, four maps, usual maps, big? That's kind of insane. I wonder if they put a time limit on this kind of battle, because uh, I feel like this could take like an hour or so. After taking out this first army, we now get a chance to build defenses and also regroup all of our units and defend our victory point. And surprise, surprise, because I'm Nurgle, I could just keep building the most busted towers in the entire game and they will obliterate everything. In the meantime, I have uh, some very important things to attend to, such as uh, ensuring all of my units are in a gigantic cluster. So wave one is on its way and it's mostly not, oh my God, did they? Did the tower really just take out 50% of their health in one shot? Rest yeah, Nurgle peace. towers are, uh, yeah, they're pretty good, I guess. And now it's time for us to just sit here and weather the storm. Plus, most of the Slanesh units are just really, really fast. And even if we chased after them, yeah. we could not physically catch them. So the solution is to, you know, just not move. Not do and that. And just to make sure that all of our guys are good, I can overcast the old fleshy abundance. And uh, every single piece of damage we've taken is now gone. Not to mention that now I can literally click a button and just evaporate everyone around us as health, making our gigantic ball strategy even better. I don't even know why How they keep charging again. Like, it's just like hitting a brick wall, except it's like fleshy and squishy and repairs itself. It, it, it's not pleasant. Okay, and after sitting here... I just imagine this versus Gorok. Like... Who would die first? Just two people just regenning out of their ass, smacking each other with clubs and spitting all over each other. Like, <laughs> where does it end? Well, I suppose whenever you hit the healing cap, but like, that's a lot of time. For uh, quite a while, uh, we finished the first wave off and now we have to capture the next area. So I'm actually gonna summon a couple of reinforcements as you can see over here. They open through this portal and those guys are just gonna mm. defend the capture point because even more enemies are gonna keep attacking us from behind. I can also use I our see. supplies up here in order to reinforce our guys or give them upgrades. Okay, it looks like we've uh, lured them out of hide. A lot of strategy is going into this one battle. I'm sure that there's just more effective ways of doing things. Like, rather than reinforcing you guys, maybe just building the towers would be better. But maybe that also depends on the kind of faction and, like, what your strengths and weaknesses are. Maybe not all the towers are as OP as uh, Nurgle's towers are. So you would instead want to just replenish your troops or, like, reinforce them. Just by uh, shooting a bunch of pieces of Kugath at them. But, uh, unfortunately, they are gonna meet the wrong end of my big-ass toads. What's kind of funny about our army is that, uh, actually, all of our units are extremely low tier. Like, Nurglings are ridiculously cheap, and they're not actually that strong. The only reason that we're able to win is just because we have so much healing so we have another wave mm. coming as we just capture the next point and i am just gonna go ahead and build a million zillion tier four towers and we basically can't lose now and as i said before more enemies are also gonna make their way from the original starting zone but they're gonna uh, get destroyed the towers for them, yeah they're they're kind of getting destroyed so upon capturing this point we also get access to a couple more cooler reinforcements such as pox riders of nurgle and i think i just summoned them on the wrong point yes yes Rip. i did on the bright side these guys are actually <laughs> Actually quick, but they're basically just frog oh, riders. Uh, you I know, see. if you thought it couldn't get better before, you were wrong. Okay, now that we've captured this one, we have the final capture point, which is defended by a lot more guys. And uh, what the heck Who's is that, that thing? That is the. Uh, ah, I, I don't. You. I don't know what I'm supposed to feel when I look at that. So let's just uh, go everything. ahead and add these guys Excessively. to our giant massive blob. And now that everybody's all good, we can go ahead and just uh, move as one down the stairs. Me and the boys on our way to watch the world premiere of Sex 2. This has lasted 30 Excuse minutes me? so far, and I think about 20 minutes of this is just me walking from point A to point B yeah, because our thought. guys are so freaking slow. Unfortunately, uh, they don't call Kugath the master of thickness for nothing. Although I think he's just... Oh, yeah, he's... He's just staring at that ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is Kugath's world. He's merely letting you exist in it. 
and with the last capture point going our way we're gonna be going against the big old demon prince himself and this time around i'm feeling fair we're not gonna build a single tower what i am gonna do is summon uh probably the best units in the entire game for nurgle and, are you summoning and oh them my on god the right i just realized point? i summoned oh, the wrong no. point you gotta be kidding me and now it's time for big demon big boy thing with tits oh wow oh the great oh. unclean one is so sad he really wants to get into that either way this is our final boss Eventually we're gonna beat get this guy out of the sky or well he could probably land on kugath and then get his ass beat anyways we do have a bunch of these uh really Ooh. weird looking like mechanical i don't even know what these things are he's still on his way he's still on he's his way coming not gonna stop for anyone okay and, uh, yeah it looks like we're getting surrounded from pretty much every angle but uh hopefully we can out heal it the demon prince and kugath i think are going to town but uh oh yeah Ooh. i'm gonna put my actually now that i think about it since this is one huge massive battle wouldn't it be possible for nargle to finally hit their healing cap because that resets for every battle but since this one is last so long and there's so many enemies and maybe just maybe they could get through that but like then again we're on the final boss and we haven't even hit that or cleaver hasn't even mentioned anything about it so i guess not funny on the uh one who's bigger also he's finally got here it took him so long but he's so happy about it all right big boy i i, I hey. see that excitement in your face but you're gonna have to bring that right up the anus of that guy now this is the most ambitious crossover kugath and his big old brother going to town on a giant uh bdsm demon prince i feel like without context that might sound worse than it already does oh and at <laughs> last mr bdsm has fallen finally now uh, as any good chaos story ends we go and throw him in our pokeball and uh now we're gonna use him to enslave a giant polar bear and with that what? we have killed the first demon prince out of four. what is even going After on this, what we would need to do is kill the demon princes of corn zinch and nurgle and then fight another boss and after that. but that is for another time and while kugath I goes guess. and just eats the ass of this demon i am gonna take a nap regardless if you liked the video consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel have a good rest your day. See ya. Nurgle's love. Nurgle's love. <laughs> that was awesome. I actually got to see a lot more of just how the game works and some useful tips that we might end up using once we start playing. Very interesting campaign mechanics. I, I wonder which one that is and whether it's worth playing or not since I know a lot of you guys want to see me play Immortal Empires but eh, we could visit the other things. And of course, as Cleeper said, if you haven't already, Go check out his video. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.